<clears throat> All right, guys, what is going on? So today, I have a few tips for you. I don't want to take too much of your time, but I have a few tips for you on how you should be properly breaking in your boots before you go out and attempt things like special forces selection, um, ranger school, going out with your unit for a 12 mile ruck march, really anything where you're gonna be going out with your boots, putting a bunch of miles on them, these tips for breaking your, your boots are gonna be critical for you to avoid blisters, extra pain, injury, any sort of suffering whatsoever. And these are very easy tips that you can implement um, that you really need to implement because the last thing that you wanna do is find yourself out there at, say, selection, and you didn't break in your boots properly, you're out there on a the long ruck, and now you found yourself with a debilitating injury that stops you from moving forward, stops you from completing the ruck march, and ultimately stops you from being selected. And all the while, you could have avoided the entire problem if you would have just broken in your boots properly. So I'm gonna show you a few things on how to quickly break in your boots, and I'm also gonna give you some more tips on how you can avoid uh, foot injuries and blisters, things like that, um, with some other tips and tricks that I've learned throughout the years. And I guarantee you, all these tips and tricks are tested, tried, and true, and they are absolutely going to help you when you're out there on your long rucks and help you to avoid any potential extra rubbing, blisters, or debilitating injuries that you would have otherwise suffered. So let's get into it. First of all, you need to make sure that before you do anything, you gotta find your good boot and sock combo. So what I mean by that is you have to find a brand and model of boot and a brand and model of sock that you like and you know work for you, and you use that boot and sock combo for the rest of your career, period. You don't wanna go out there and get two different brands or two different models of boots. It's really just not gonna do you any good. Find your one specific boot and sock combo, do all your training with that, get to know that boot and sock combo, let your foot actually form to the boot and the socks themselves, and I promise you if you do it that way, you're setting yourself up for success. Now, my boot and sock combo is the Garma NFSs. I've been using these things for as long as I can remember, and also I use Fox River socks. And we're actually lucky today because I actually just bought a brand new pair of Fox Rivers, and this is how they look. They're the Fox River Fatigue Fighters. Now, by the way, if you guys are interested in my boot sock combo, I will drop a link to these things in the description. I definitely advise you go check it out because this boot and sock combo is money, man. It's gotten me through everything I've ever done that was hard in my career. And honestly, I still wear these even just when I go into work and go to the office and come home. This is my boot and sock combo. This is what I wear. Everything I do in the army, this is what I'm wearing. So even if you don't go with this combo, make sure to find yourself a good boot and sock combo that works for you. Now, whether or not you already know your boot and sock combo or you're still figuring it out, let's say you buy yourself some brand new boots. The first thing you wanna do is check the fit. And this is even if you're buying a brand new pair of boots of the same make and model that you've been buying before, because sometimes they'll make adjustments, these companies, and you wanna just double check that. Don't just go into anything thinking that it's gonna be exactly like it was before. Make sure you double check and make sure you check that the fit is snug and not loose, but not so tight that it hurts any part of the foot, any part of the foot. You should be able to move your toes and wiggle your toes in the toe box and the sides of the front portion of your foot should not be rubbing on the side of the boot here. If they are, then you need to get yourself wide boots. When you're first breaking in your boots, I would advise that you do a, what's called a battle lace, or at least that's what I heard the first time I ever heard of it. It doesn't really matter what you call it. But all it is, is you lace up your boot everywhere except for where you'll have the bend in the ankle, okay? So you'll lace all this up here, and then you'll skip a lace right here where you have that bend portion. Okay, here, I'll show you what it looks like. All right, you see that? So we skip the lace right here in the center. That'll give you some extra movement here as you're breaking in the boot and help it to become pliable faster. And once the boot is broken and you can keep it that way or um, you can lace it back up the way it is. A lot of guys you'll see will keep it that way. They'll keep it battle laced. Um, I usually like to go ahead and, and lace it back up the way it's supposed to be, but, but either way, that's gonna help you break in the boot faster, okay? So do that out of the box. Now, another thing that I like to do, and I definitely would advise that you do this too, these are my go-to ruck marching boots, by the way. I have two pairs of the exact same boot, but these are more my daily boots. They're a little nicer. These are my ruck marching boots. You can tell they're a little dirtier and a little more worn. In there, I have my Easy Feet insoles. I would definitely advise these. If you guys are looking for a good pair of insoles, 
Easy Feet makes a great pair of insoles. Again, I'll put these, uh, I'll put these in the description for you. You guys can go check it out following that link. Put your insoles in there. They don't have to be brand new, but they, don't, they shouldn't be super used either, but put your insoles into your brand new boots. And after you've done that, you wanna get these bad boys soaking wet, okay? Whether you wear them into the shower, wear them in the tub, or just hose them down, something like that, really doesn't matter, but you wanna get them soaking wet. And while you're doing that, you'll be wearing your brand new socks. So they don't really have to be your brand new socks, but I would advise wearing whatever socks you wear for your boot and sock combo. So that's another thing, you wanna have broken in socks before you show up to any of those events as well. You don't wanna have brand new socks. Your socks need to be just as broken in as your boots. And like I said, you know, Fox River, these, I think these socks are the best socks out there, but Fox River makes really good socks. Darn Tough uh, makes really good socks. But avoid at all costs the OD Army Issue socks and cotton socks. Don't use, don't use those socks, don't use cotton socks. Get your pair, get yourself a good pair of socks, okay? You need to invest in this kind of stuff because it's, it's really just gonna save you from so much pain at the end of the day. All right, so we're gonna put our boots on. And when you lace these guys up, you, d you don't wanna have them super tight, okay? Keep them, keep them uh, just comfortable. Not, not super tight, not super loose, but just, you know, snug. Same thing when you tie them at the top. You never wanna go super tight because that's gonna cut off blood circulation, all right? Just keep them. Snug, but still a little loose. You should be able to stick your finger in there, just like that. That's always how I do mine. I just tuck my laces like that. Boom, too easy. All right, now we're gonna go get these guys wet and we're gonna do it outside because if I do it inside, I don't think the wife's gonna appreciate that very much. Obviously it's a little dark out here. Um, I decided to make this video <laughs> at uh, night, but that's okay. I think you guys get the gist of what I'm doing here. All right, soaking wet, guys. Don't miss any spots. And once you got them soaking wet, you just wanna walk around with them for maybe you know 15 minutes, 20 minutes, something like that. At least try to get maybe a mile in with them if you can, all right, if it's possible for you. Just go for a quick walk around the block in your boots, soaking wet. Don't worry about looking crazy out there. Remember why you're doing it. It's gonna save you pain in the long run, okay? Just go out there and get it done. All right, so you went on your walk, your, your mile long walk at least, right? So you're gonna take your boots off. They should be nice and pliable by now. And now you've taken them off, just give them some good bends, all right? Really stretch them out as much as you can. Bend them out. Don't worry about breaking them. You're not gonna break them. Just bend the shit out of them. And that should really get you started when you're breaking your boots. And just these few things alone will help you uh, start breaking your boots correctly. Now, um, as you've gone on your walk, your one mile walk, I want you to make sure to check on your feet, see if you had any rubbing anywhere, see if you had any hot spots. I know a mile doesn't seem like a very long time, but if you're feeling any sort of hot spots or having any sort of rubbing from your feet being wet with that short of amount of time already, then you know you probably have some poor fitting boots because you really shouldn't be feeling anything. Those should have felt super comfortable, even straight out of the box with them being super wet. Um, it gives them the chance to form to your feet right out the box with it being wet like that. So again, if you're already feeling hot spots, then uh, you know it sucks, but you're gonna have to return those boots and figure out something else. So now you've done the first initial steps to breaking in your brand new boots. So now what you're gonna need to do is let these bad boys dry out all on their own and leave the insoles in there just like you have them. Once they're dried out, I want you to wear them for maybe ar around a week to work, all right? Easy activities only. Just walk around the boots, you're wearing them around for a week. Once that's done, maybe that next weekend, go ahead and go on a six mile ruck march. And with that ruck march, it's really not done for speed or anything like that. I want you to do it solely for the purpose of breaking your boots. That's what the focus is of that ruck march. So do a little bit of strides, do a little bit of shuffles, maybe a little bit of running, you know, anything and everything that you might find yourself doing in the future during a ruck march, test it out and help the boot morph to those activities. And that'll help the boot stretch out in every area that you're gonna to expect to need it to perform once you are going towards that challenge, whatever that challenge is for you. And the whole time, keep using the same boot and sock combo and 
insoles if you need them. Now during this entire process, you might experience some hot spots, but you really shouldn't be getting any major blisters out of doing all these steps. If you do, then you might want to relocating some different boots or trying a different size. Now let's talk a little bit about sizes. If you're getting blisters in your heels, then your boots are probably too big. Go ahead and knock it down a half size, maybe even a full size. Just keep dialing it down until you get it right, until these blisters go away. If you're getting blisters on the sides of your feet, that means you need a wider toe box because you're experiencing too much rubbing on the sides of your feet and you're getting blisters. And I would say those are probably the, the number one areas you're gonna experience blisters uh, as you're out there ruck marching. And again, stay away from cotton socks, okay? That's just gonna aggravate the feet. It's gonna make your feet more prone to blisters, more prone to infection. You wanna get some good, you know, wool style socks. Find some socks that are more sure wicking, uh, durable, and it doesn't hurt to find some socks that'll give you some compression on the calves because that'll help you for those really long rucks, those long days. So last word of advice, guys, you know, remember, you wanna be showing up to these events. Anything that's gonna be challenging on the feet where you're gonna be wearing boots for a long time, selection, ranger school, long distance ruck marches, all those sorts of things, you wanna have well broken in boots. All right, these are my go-to ruck march boots right now. You can tell they're, <laughs> they're a lot more broken in, they're a lot more worn down. You can see I've been putting them through the ringer. Even though I have a little bit of rubbing here, you can see by the way I walk and by the way I, uh, cause I shuffle a lot, I have a lot of rubbing there on the heel, but I'm not planning on replacing these for a while. All right, these are, these are perfect right now. I would bring these to ranger school right now. A lot of people will talk about having ankle support. I don't really th see the uh, benefit of ha having ankle support. I think it's just more important to train the ankles up themselves than relying on a boot to give you ankle support. So I like to have minimal aggravation on the ankles and maximum support where you actually need it and that's at the, at the foot and at the sole. And laces, I like to use traditional shoelaces because they tend not to come untied or, or loosen too much. A lot of these new boots or even the old boots will have those uh, tightening or expandable like uh, circular laces. I don't really like those because they're harder to, uh, to tighten up and they just seem to come undone all the time. So if your boots don't come with regular shoe laces like these, I would advise replacing them with these because they've just never done me wrong and they seem to work the best. I also would advise getting boots that are breathable and boots that dry quickly, okay? Don't invest in waterproof boots because that's just gonna hold sweat in. When you're out there working hard, your feet are gonna sweat also and you don't want that sweat to hold into your boots. You want it to, to wick away from the, the boot itself. Don't think that you're gonna go out and don't think that you're gonna be going out to things like Ranger School and, and SFAS and, and not get your feet wet. It's gonna happen, okay? So you might as well just start getting used to it. Don't be buying wet weather boots thinking that they're gonna keep your feet from getting wet out there in those sorts of events. That's the wrong idea. You just need to train up your feet and get as used to it as possible with your feet being wet. And it's totally possible, guys. Don't think I'm blowing smoke up your ass. I could ruck a whole 12 mile ruck march with my feet soaking wet and not even feel the effects by it at this point because I'm so well trained up. Now, I'm not just some sort of freak of nature or anything like that. I've just put all these things into practice and I've done it over time. And now I, you know, just have very good feet for ruck marching. <laughs> and that's it, guys. That should set you up for success for anything you're going out there to do, whether it be some sort of school, some sort of long distance ruck march, anything that's, you know, you're gonna be out there that's challenging yourself with military boots, that's what you need to do beforehand to break in your brand new boots and to set yourself up for success to limit those potential injuries that you would have otherwise had. Now, if you guys are watching this and you have some tips and tricks of your own that you'd like to share with the group, please do so. Drop that in the comments, let everybody know. The more information that we have on this topic, the better. This channel is supposed to be good for anybody that watches it. Don't forget the boot and sock combo. And again, if you wanna check out my own personal boot and sock combo, I'll leave links in the description. I definitely recommend you go check it out. If you have any other questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead and drop in the comments. I do read the comments and I try to get back to each and every one of them. If you haven't already, I definitely think you should like and subscribe to the channel. This channel is a plethora of good information with military career enhancement, army schools, fitness, you name it, it's on this channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos. Here's a few of those videos right here. I definitely recommend you give those a watch. Besides that, I've got nothing else for you. I'll see you on the next one.